Welcome to the Mad Trio Podcast. This week we have the California Pariah, Jonathan Charney, James, the Fat Man, Stevens, Hello. and Ryan somewhere over the Rainbow Preston. So, so have any of you heard of the Vespa 150 TAP? No. Why the fuck would I be keeping track of Vespa? Hold, <laughs> hold on. The Vespa want the ve- the Vespa 150 ta- uh, TAP or TAP was an anti tank scooter made in the nineteen. 19- no, made in the 1950s from a Vespa scooter for use uh, with the French paratroopers. Introduced in 56 oh, and updated in 1959, the I scooter was produced by... Vespa. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really bad at French. No, I did, I did know about those. I had just completely forgot about them. So the, the 150 TAP... I uh, taps can't say m- I actually knew the model number, though. Mounted a... a uh, M27 millimeter recoilless uh, rifle, a U.S. made lightweight anti armor cannon. Uh, it was very light comparison to a standard 75 millimeter cannon, but was also still able to penetrate 100 millimeters of armor with its heat warhead. <laughs> Damn. So uh, I got to show what James. So I, I got to show James this just because, you know, you hope you don't accidentally hit the front brake. <laughs> You know, because That's insane. It's if you take a look at the picture. T- if you type in the Vespa 150 tap, <coughs> Google. <coughs> excuse me. I'm looking at the Wikipedia article. It looks like there's five feet of barrel. Yeah. In in front of the scooter, so it, you're not going to do any sharp turns in, in this thing. <laughs> I. It's also called apparently the the Tap Fifty Six and the Tap Fifty Nine. I don't know if those are model numbers now because they don't particularly say. Uh-huh. Uh, it's a hundred and forty six six a hundred and forty six cc single stroke, single cylinder two stroke. <laughs> wow, that's not that much at all. I mean, that's what that maybe thirty horsepower. Yeah, I guess so. Um, I just think that's hilarious. That was my, I saw that today and it made me laugh just because I could. I, I kind of imagine somebody firing that when they're driving. <laughs> Suck the blood. I just. Wow. I'm just looking at a picture of it now. The fucking Frank would make some shit like this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have an argument there. So the scooters would be paired. I mean, just wow. The scooters I mean, would. I feel bad for like the 50 cal gunners on top of like a Humvee already. And they've got like that big giant angled shield. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's way too exposed. This fucking thing is a whole other level. <laughs> you know what it really needs? It, it needs one of those, those, those bells. You know, those, you, oh, you little put bike on, bells? Yeah. It's bring, like a, bring. Go, ding, 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 fire. Yeah, ding, ding. <laughs> the the, sco- <laughs> the scooter would be par- would be parachute dropped in pairs, accompanied by two man teams. The gun was carried on one scooter, where the ammunition was loaded on the other. Due to, <laughs> due to lack of any kind of aiming device, the recoilless rifle were never designed to be fired from the scooter. The gun was mounted on a, a, a M nineteen seventeen Browning machine gun tripod, which was carried by the scooter. Oh. That's starting to make a little more sense because the way I'm looking at it now, it looks like the seat is on top of the barrel. Like, okay. so you'd be riding it. I mean, that would be the last place I want mine. Not <laughs> but hold on, hold on. Uh, however, in an emergency, it could be fired while in the frame and while the scooter was mooning, moving. The Bazooka Vespa was relatively cheap. The Vespa cost roughly $500 at the time. So you, I guarantee this thing saw a lot of action being fired while driving. <laughs> Can you imagine riding that thing around in Vietnam? <laughs> I I'm I'm still was it fifty. I'm I actually wonder if this was legitimately used, um, just because it's so cute. <laughs> it's, it's got, you might be able to find footage of it being fired. It's so it's. I'm telling you, the the, the cards and the spokes would make it probably have a manlier sound to it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It would probably make that you know. Le move, you know, some sort of stereotypical French. Um, hold on, I'm actually typing Google. Wow, there's a couple of these. I'm gonna have to when I go home. I know what I'm doing <laughs> after this. There's some. Uh, this is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, if I if I'm on the front lines and somebody gave me one of those things, and I'm in France, I, I'm definitely throwing my hands up. Like, yeah, so white flag over here. I mean, it's, it's part of the reason they're <laughs> 
<laughs> and another interesting thing, I didn't want to get too far into this, but I thought this was interesting. Gun applications in New York's Jewish community spiked nearly a thousand percent after Hanukkah attack. Yeah, I bet. Applications for gun permits are surging in the New York in New York's Rockland County after five Orthodox oh excuse me, Orthodox Jews were stabbed at a Hanukkah celebration at a local rabbi's home. The Rockland County Clerk's Office reported nearly a thousand-fold increase in the gun permit application in the weeks following the December 28th attack. The count clearly received 65 new gun permit applications, according to New York uh, Post, before the attack. The office received an average of six applications a week. Now, I don't know New York's laws. I mean, if it's any close to what New York City is, I'm kind of curious how many of the, the people who actually applied actually got it. That's a good question. My the other question I have is being uh, a, is being Jewish or being a practicing Jew. I don't know if there's a a, a a line in the sand. Would that be enough to get you uh, be able to get the permit? Well, you know, in, in Los Angeles County, um, most mostly the sheriff would just laugh at you if you if you came yeah. for like a like a concealed carry, for example. Uh, Orange County a lot different, but but with LA County. You basically need the, you know, like a, like a legitimate reason, such as like you're a, um, a jeweler or something like that, and you routinely have, you know, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of, of dollars in merchandise on you. And you're you're a high value kind of target, you know. <coughs> so you know they'll they're more likely to issue those. But I wonder if if because I New York, I know New York has some pretty stringent carry laws there I, I mean i wonder if, if that would be enough you know let's say if that kind of thing happened here in, in, in los angeles if that would lack their opinion for for that group of people no because uh, to me I, I could i could make a pretty compelling case if i was jewish and then living in a neighborhood where that was happening yeah that's what i was kind of wondering i mean this might be one of those things in time that it was a a hiccup a hiccup far as being that that in, a, in an area that's not particularly firearm friendly. New York City is not. I don't know about New York State. So I'm assuming it'll be a hiccup where they just say, okay, these people got attacked. We need to do something. This article does say that there's a there are rabbis who have firearm permits um, in the sea. A lot of people are worried, especially large Hasidic and Jewish communities in Rockland County, said Eric Melson, who owns the Precision Gunsmith in Rockland County. I have rabbis come in, and some of the rabbis already have concealed carry permits. There's a couple of questions I have. One being in some areas <coughs> you're required to say, if you have four guns, you're required to test and shoot all four guns, make sure they're licensed. Um, some places make you do a field of fire. So it'll be like, say like 10, 15 and 20 yards, for example. Um, so I'm curious on, on what they actually make you do. And what are the reasons? Could you actually say, like Ryan was saying, be say, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm Jewish. This happened in my area. I want to protect myself. And is that? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a high risk, you know, I'm a high risk person. And know, is kind of and is self protection enough? In some in in the, some states, self protection is is not a legitimate reason to uh, to 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 want a firearm carry permit. Yeah, I think most of them they don't really put that down as you know something that they'd give you a CCW over. They. would yeah, like I, I mean, in our county, I think maybe it's more plausible that you just get one just because. But I would say throughout California, that's not really going to happen in most of New York as well. I mean, just saying that you're scared for your personal safety isn't going to get you nothing. I mean, in California, I don't know how it is in New York, but in California specifically right now, up to the way the current laws are, it's really particularly up to the, it's, it's up to the sheriff, the sheriff really sets um, the the laws regarding who wants to um, who wants you to get a permit or not. So he could easily say, "Sorry." He could easily say, "Hey, you. you know, I don't want you to because of these reasons," or "Hey, go ahead, you know, it's your Second Amendment right." Yada yada. Um, by the way, I think this is badass. Is being um, super pro Second Amendment. And I'm glad to hear that these, you know, that there's there's people out there that are willing to put their protection in their hands. Yeah. Um, and I have no doubt most of these people have at least an idea how dangerous that statement is. You know, it's not 
to roughly paraphrase, you're not a cop. You're not Superman. Yeah. Your your goal is protection, yeah. not running. Um, yeah, you're supposed to always avoid confrontation when you're carrying a CCW rather than seek it out. And I wish I knew somebody who, who one of these guys, so I'd love to hear their uh, theological argument, um, why they're pro it, and if they were against it before, was it a personal or a the- uh, theological reason why they were against it? Um, Cause for some reason this is, it's, it's not, it doesn't seem to be super uncommon that there's, there's um, practicing Jews who are anti gun. And I don't, I've never understood why. I don't know either. Um, or, so I just, Hey, you got, you know, I think I just thought it was badass. It's a great article. And this is the Washington examiner. Um, more power to you guys. Keep yourself safe. Oh, that was super. Yeah, it was, I mean, that's definitely, definitely agree, man. It's, I mean, it's something that, that as I've gotten older, I've realized, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I mean, just the idea, not kid, you know, when we were late teens kind of thing into, into my early adult, it was just like, oh, okay, yeah, no, carrying a gun, self-protection, all those things. They never considered sort of the, the you know, the responsibility or the, uh, the, the, the connotations that are, that are associated with that and, and what your, not necessarily your right, but what I consider the moral obligation. You know, James was saying, you, you know, one would, there are certain states that have a, um, you know, sort of a due diligence, and there's, there's a, like a name for the, for the law, but essentially, like, did you have an opportunity to get out and you did, instead you stuck around to shoot somebody? Yeah, you know, like if if they can say that no, look, dude, you had you had multiple opportunities <laughs> to get out of this situation. You have a, a a legal obligation to do so. In my opinion, you have a moral obligation to do. So. No, you know, it it is about personal protection, and because there's there's so many variables when it comes to that. Not even about like, hey, I want to be the good guy in this situation, but how many other people are also wanting to be the good guy? Is there somebody else? Is there a cop on the scene, plain clothes officers who you might see pull a gun, you might not have the training to really assess that situation. So it really should be left down to, Hey, my life is in immediate danger from this immediate threat. There, you know, a, um, a couple of things is the States that there, there's a, a law called a uh, castle doctrine, basically saying my home is my castle. Yeah. Therefore I have the means and the, the right. legal right to protect it. And that kind has of a, the opposite <laughs> of the, of the, 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 the law. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you have a lot of <coughs> a leeway there. The, the other thing is um, in all honesty, and this is going to sound anti-cop mm-hmm. and it's not, but this is reality. All because a person is a cop does not necessarily mean they're qualified to shoot the gun. Um, while they are required to do range qualifications, doesn't mean they're a marksman. And a lot of the times, these, well, their range qualifications are pretty lax. <laughs> and true. And 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 so I, I just want. Well, I'm sure there's this different. Thing. And I, I want to, I want to put it out there is just the fact that you know we everybody has this this mental picture of a cop and it's <clears throat> probably because of movies and TV shows and <clears throat> excuse me about how cops are marksmen they're not in New York City I think there's a nine pound trigger you, you're that's a ridiculous um just a nine pound trigger pull when I think the most the commons what four to six but yeah five and a half usually for the standard semi automatic um. For those who don't know what we're talking about, um, the pounds of pressure it takes to pull the trigger back. So your average being about, about five pounds, that's, that's pretty easy. You can do a, you know, a, a, an even squeeze and, and, and get it off. Nine pounds, you're not accurate worth a shit. You're definitely going to jerk that trigger for something you're not incredibly used to. There was um, hopefully the CCW folks and cops alike take it on themselves to go a little bit beyond their their usual you know training requirements and say okay i'm not just going to meet the minimum here when it comes to my life or other people's lives on the line you know take some fucking personal responsibility and, and hit the range a little bit <laughs> yeah no there was a number of years ago and i don't remember how long ago because i've kind of lost track time there was an incident where these i think it was the, the, a bunch of cops are trying to shoot one bad guy and ended up shooting everybody but so there came a joke <laughs> yeah at that so what's the safest place to be when a New York city uh, cop is shooting, it's like right in front of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And other news, economy class passengers have lost up to eight inches of leg room and two inches of seat width since the so-called golden age of flying seats have n- also have narrower arm rests, which explains why somebody of my height and carriage 
has a hard time flying. Last time I flew, it it, it took me a couple of days before and afterwards to stop being in pain. <laughs> and, yeah, I haven't seen you in a little bit. I don't know if you put on any weight, but you're, you're pretty tall. What are you, about six four, six five? I'm six five. Um, honestly, I'm skinny. Yeah. I mean, I, I've put on a little weight since high school, but You've not been pretty skinny. But you know, <clears> even six five. That's I mean, that's that's going to be an uncomfortable playing a riding coach. Oh God, it's ridiculous! Like literally, um, I flew to Europe when I was a kid. And this was on a triple seven and I was with my parents and I actually told my dad, Hey, when time gets out, just push. I just, you know, <laughs> knock me out of the aisle because after that nine hour flight, I'm not quite sure if I'm actually going to be physically able to stand up just yeah. because. Fucking leg back of <laughs> Yeah, dude. I mean, cause you're staring at your knees for like nine and a half hours. Wiggle your big toe. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. As long as I don't get the hat. Can I, do I get to drive the, the, the truck? I mean. You get to drive the pussy wagon if you wiggle your pussy. <laughs> so, Ryan might not have heard, but we just had a missing boy found dead in El Dorado County. Uh, found dead the same day that he was reported missing, actually. Um, but the thing is, is now their top suspect is a 20-year-old kid that there's no real information being released about it too much. But but the kid that was killed is like one of nine in a foster family's care. And he was like, he was like 11. 11, yeah, he was 11 years old. Now, is it just me or does this seem like one of those uh, serial killers being caught <clears throat> early things? Because that's what it seems like to me. You know, honestly, I mean, it, 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 now that you say serial killer in the context of this, I mean, it does hit like a couple of those profiles, the sort of things, you know, the, the, uh, you know, you from the, from the street, so to speak. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's a big fucking movie. That's why I'm kind of thinking he though. picked a foster kid is because he's expecting not very many people to care about him so much. That's the only thing I could think of. But I mean, 20 years old to go and kill some kid that ni- is nine years younger than you very is very reminiscent of what you kind of hear in uh, children uh, serial killers type thing. Yeah, kind of that uh, you, you you dreamed about it for so long and then eventually you're thinking about it doesn't do it anymore and you have to take the next step. I mean, maybe that was the, the, the first step in a, in a line of something. I mean, obviously... 20 years old, you kill an 11 year old, they're, the crazy is, is not a question. Yeah. You know, I, I suppose it's kind of crazy. But uh, there's definitely some 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 intellectual fucking disability going yeah, on. Yeah, some intellectual difficulty or some type of mental incapacity. <sighs> yeah, I mean, or, or just, I mean, some fucking old school wires crossed kind of thing. Like, hey, man, you're just. You just not fit to, 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 to be around people anymore. Yeah. I'm hoping the kid basically gets life. <clears throat> if if the dude is guilty, yeah, I don't want him. I want him to die behind prison. Yeah. Um, At I'm, the very least, but we're in California where we have the death penalty. We just don't use it. No, I honestly, at, at this point, if, if you're going to do that, put him on a super max the rest of his life. Yeah. Um, and, and As a father, you know, I have a hard time with this because... I always call I always call myself a reasonable pacifist, and this is one of the few things to me as a father. It's like if you you do this to my kid, give me twenty minutes with a guy. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like that that line for Three Musketeers. I'll change his religion. Um, a couple times before I'm done. It's just I had a hard time processing this just because I I have a, a a young son. Yeah, I don't know, man. I this this broke my heart because he's a you know cute little kid, really young. I mean. You know the, the kid still has spots, and this 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 son of a bitch decided to do it. Now I also heard allegedly one of the rumors I heard that the problem with having this in the small town is you hear rumors is allegedly he ended up killing himself. A uh, twenty year old? No, the, the 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 kid. Oh, that's the story I heard, and it was just like. And usually I'm not the guy like, hey, that's not that's 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 not cast judgments, you know. That's that's let's talk about it. This is the first time in a long time. Like, I just don't want to know. I'm I'm, I have no desire to know until the cops release information, just because I'm having a hard time processing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's there's a general <laughs> rule that I started to follow with with any kind of tragedy, local or national or otherwise, uh, is 72 hours. 
you know, <laughs> let, let some information come out because the, the world of speculation that starts. Yeah. I mean, it gets so out of control so fast, and the telephone game gets gets out of control so fast that yeah, you start you start having these opinions and feelings before you even know what to attach them to, or you're attaching them to the wrong thing. And then when it, when the information comes out, it's like you're still left with that with that feeling as if it fucking happened, you know. For, but all I'm gonna say is, what eleven year old kills himself. And yeah. then, and then for me, you know, that's, that's not something you hear about ever. And no. for me, this was a hundred percent emotional. There's no, see, maybe I, you know, I don't, I know I'm like, this is the fact if a tragedy happens somewhere else that I'm not near, it's easier to deal with versus a tragedy that pretty much happens in your backyard. Yeah. And so this was one of the ones that it's like, man, for me, it's like, that could have been my little boy. Yeah. And I it's like, so that's why I, I didn't want to like, I've been avoiding Facebook to some degrees just because of all the locals. I know it's like, I, 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 well, that's why when you brought up Facebook, I'm kind of thinking to myself, you know, I'm glad I'm not on Facebook right now <laughs> so I don't have to see all the rumors being spread. Before I even said, you know, much about Facebook. But that's kind of where I'm at on it is, you know, I would prefer, you know, totally Friday, just the facts. You know, that's all I really want. And yeah, that's yeah. why, I mean, it's very interesting that um, the their suspect was already arrested yesterday. This happened on Saturday is when they found the boy. The boy was reported missing and found dead. Um, the same day for two days later to have already a suspect in custody. Th there's evidence that leads them right to this guy, obviously, you know, <sighs> to get enough for, yeah, for an yeah, arrest definitely. rather yeah, than not, just no, a suspect. An arrest. Or, yeah, yeah. Arrest on would... a, just a 24 hour hold. I mean, I mean, this was just basically like the thing would happen to the, the, the cop yeah. within the last month or two. It's just like, you know, I found the reason why more interesting, but anything, anything more, it's like, you know, I don't need to know this. And he, yeah. so I have a hard time. The older I get, I have a hard time with it to some degree. Uh, maybe it's because of fact I'm a parent versus if I was a single guy, I don't think it would have bothered me as much. And that probably makes me cold. Well, I mean, as far as I, I'll tell you is growing up in this County for how many years I've been here. Um, and versus being down in Southern California for many years as down there the difference is population density to where you get more common these types of crimes where sh cops get killed kids go missing and found dead um you know people being kidnapped and found dead as That's well true. it doesn't you happen know, as i mean much it doesn't here. happen as much <clears throat> up here whereas southern california i mean you have it's uh, monday kids yeah kids getting going missing all the time so to have this many major crimes in our county that that's been happening over in the past two years, it's I would say it's because of our population density is getting high. So warning, I'm going to be talking a little bit about politics. I didn't okay. want to, but I said it. I'm going to. Part of the reason why there's uh, an increase in crime in the state of California is the propositions that basically legalized a lot of things or yeah. lessened crimes and. Y'all can, can bitch. You're going to say this. I'm right. Fuck off. Um, that's the reason why there's an increase in homeless. This is a, one of the reasons why you can steal up to $950 a day. a day and not get a felony. Um, this is because of the California government. Now, if this is a Republican state, I'd say it's a Republican's fault. If it's a Democrat state, it's a Democrat's fault. California is a liberal leaning state. It's the Democrat's fault. Um, liberal Democrats fault. And I would say would now the question you have to ask is if it was like it was five, 10 years ago when some of these laws would this, would it have happened? Maybe to Possibly. some, maybe to some degree, because James is right. There are more people coming up in this, in this neck of the woods. It's just the natural progression well, of society and other things. <laughs> um, yeah, because there's a, there's a, Sorry, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, because what it is, is it's the natural progression because people are being priced out. They're moving. It's human migration. It's so it is possible. Um, however, because yeah, of, well, because of, a... hold on, hold on, I'm not done. Because of prisoner relocation, <laughs> what happened is the federal government told California, uh, California that you have too many people in prisons. You need to do something about it. So instead of doing, being smart about things, what they did is they sent prisoners to all around jails. And the state of California, that's one of the reasons if you live in California and live in BFE, one of the reasons say you have, I don't know, a bunch of crips there is because the California government put them there. 
If they weren't there before, government introduced them into there. So there's one of the issues that happening. It's 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 compounding interest. Yeah. Well, there's also a, a byproduct of, of larger cities, like Dave was saying, as far as the population density goes. Is you you do lose a lot of that small town sort of accountability. You yeah. Know I mean the and not even necessarily the actual person walking to your door and saying, "Hey, hey there, Jimbo, uh, such and such," and then you know, "Hey, uh, it'd be better if you did this." And you know, "Hey, your lawn's looking a little shitty." I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. But but the the feeling of the accountability to your neighborhood that. There's a there's a smaller, more intimate amount of eyes on you. You know, yeah. when there's enough people, people get lost in the in the sea, and it doesn't matter. You feel alone around a thousand people. You know, what? and when you have a society like that, there's always going to be people that fuck against the system, no matter where you are. I don't care what culture or society you have. You have enough people. There's going to be people that are taking advantage or or going against the grain in some way. I would, one of the things I think you're talking about is what I, I colloquially call, you know, country rules. If you, if you live in a city and you live in a country, there's completely two different set of rules. Now, sure. a lot of these rules aren't spoken. They're just saying you grow up, whether it's an, it's an intrinsic value that you learn unknowingly. It's, it's part of the culture you grow in. And, 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 and part of the change in that is what people do up here now. People act and do things here now that when I was a kid, 30 years ago, there's a good chance you would have gotten the crap kicked out of you for it. Just levels of difference. Um, yeah, well, not even the crap kicked out of you, but just, oh, shit, I can't do this because old man Jenkins lives across the street and he's going to see me, you know? Yeah, True, well, yeah. Yeah, I, I, and, and by the way, just, just in case you guys think we're just a bunch of old guys, which we're not com- complaining why things have changed, it's also changed for the better. In, yeah. in some ways. When I was a kid, there were a lot more, you know, Pecker Woods races, whatever. People who were, weren't really favorable to the community. That has changed a lot. A lot of people have, as much as I hate this word, a little bit of an enlightenment has happened when it comes to people. Now, it's still there, but I'd like to think a lot of people changed or died the fuck off. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, or at least having enough respect to fucking keep it to themselves. <laughs> but I get a point there. I do miss. And this is something I, I still don't completely understand, but pride in your community to enough to hold yourself and your community to a standard that you would be happy with. And I don't think that happens now. I, I think you could blame it. You could blame it on the drugs. You could blame it on the government, whatever it is. That's not there. Well, it is the, it is the larger town thing. You still find that in small town America all, all across the country. You know, the, the, the larger <clears> it gets, the more that everything lost in the shuffle. You know, there's no, no one's going to care. No one's going to notice. There's too many things to see, you know? Well, I, I also think like you were kind of on point when you were bringing up, um, how many eyes are seen on, on people in different communities. And I think what happens when you get more and more people moved up into a specific area, there's more people that are like, Oh, eh, not my problem, but they see it, but they just don't think about it. also, it's a not my problem, it's an apathy, but also it's a, how, how can I fix this? This problem is too big. There's too many people, there's too many things that need to be done, and it, it's like, where do I start? I don't know, so I got, you know, to, to make your neighborhood of, you know, fit for, for, for yourself and your family, it, it's like, you know, how many how many town council meetings do you need to go to to, to get this, this ideal in your mind, you know? I, I, I would also think this also goes along with a conversation we've had about about online and social media. I think some of the the changes in society or culture going from knowing your neighbor to being on Facebook. Now, I'll be honest, I don't know my neighbor that yeah. well, but just because yeah. I work so much. Um, but I also think, you know, like I grew up wanting to live in Mayberry. Fuck, I practically grew up in it. Yeah. Um, and there kind of was a Barney Fife. Um, so I, I love, I love this small feel. I, I, and I actually had a conversation about this with somebody within the last year about why I love small towns. It's, it's the fact that granted there's some things missing. You can't get everything you want, but I like knowing that I can depend on my neighbor. I, I love the fact that I can walk down my street and not worry about something like, you know, back in the nineties living in Compton, there's a good chance if you walk down the street, you may not make it back. You know, if at least if you watch the television, the, the news at the time. Well, so, yeah. I so, mean, it just it kind of did, you know, really depend on the colors you were wearing in that specific area. 
But, so you know. I, 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 I love small towns. Grew up in a small town. I, I prefer to be in one. But I don't know. I, I, I just, I think, uh, hopefully in the state of California, who's ever in charge, does something soon. Because I do think we're, we're starting to live in this really weird dystopian where like yeah. if you if you look well, at well if you live like if you look at San Francisco, granted, this is from <laughs> this is from the media, so give or take. I, I don't like I don't like San Francisco personally, but I I you listen to the media and you say hey you there's this guy right next to you who's who has you know he's worth two hundred million dollars lives in the high rent district and night you know and then and right next to him is this dude taking a dump. This guy's eating a six thousand dollar meal and then this dude's digging out of the trash. I mean I know that's always happened, but it seems in some places that's becoming completely commonplace. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Well I'll tell you what, I I, I personally love San Francisco as well. Like one of my favorite cities is uh one of the few cities I know of that's actually got some fucking character to it. And I don't mean gay. Um, just like a really interesting fucking town. But it's the last couple of times I've been there, you know, which is before really sort of the, the homeless crisis had, had really gotten to the sort of national attention. Um, it You can tell immediately how much of a, of a viable business it is. And I'll give you a prime example. Driving down the road one night, um, you know, just a sightseeing part of town, um, and there's no part that's not a high rent district, by the way. If you're in San Francisco proper, that's it. That's a high rent district. Um, yeah, exactly. But driving down the road, and I spot a guy, um, me and a couple of buddies, you know, uh, driving down the road, having a good time out there, seeing a music festival. See a guy that has a sign that says, Starved Like Marvin. <laughs> and then we started dying, like, well, like, that's fucking fantastic. Holy shit, this guy gets a dollar. Hey, man, let me get a picture of your sign, buddy. That's, that's great. Here, here's, here's a couple of bucks, you know. We drive 600 yards, another guy, same sign. <laughs> okay, so yeah. what, what, what does that imply to you? These people are getting together, hey, man, my sign's been getting me this much money or or, or not even like, like comparing the numbers, just like, hey, man, that's a good idea. Let me let me take that and use it for my thing. And, and it becomes this. They, they know they can kind of pull on the, the heartstrings of not just the, the, the rich folks around, but the tourists that, yeah. that come through and see the plight of the city. I have, a, that plight, kid. I have a subtle feeling that that's starting to wear thin from the stuff I've heard. Well, yeah, well no, well, the, the whole town is starting to get nutty because it's literally the absolute ends of the spectrum. You have the richest fucking folks in the country next to some of the poorest. But, well, on the on the yeah, external view, San Fran- those, on the external view, San Francisco's it. super interesting because it's the only place you can see a guy, you know, drive a, a hundred and fifty thousand dollar Ferrari next to a guy who's pooping on a Honda. Um, so yeah. it's it's a very <laughs> fascinating city from that level. Um, well, and not even just the people. I mean, the, the city's got a got a lot of amazing history. Um, you know, in, incredible work at art came out of there, and and you know. Lots of, you know, particular civil rights movements and things like that. Not to mention just the architecture I'm a huge fan of. Yeah, okay. So both of you guys know how I feel about San Francisco. Yes. Now, the thing I'll say is no matter how much I dislike that city, I do want to go there at times. I don't. I don't go there because I hate that fucking city. But I mean, like Ryan said, you know, there, there's a lot of great things that came out of it. A lot of music, a lot of art, a lot of culture, um, and a lot of really cool architecture as well. But also it is a hubbub for food. And I really yeah, want to yeah. go and just to different restaurants throughout San Francisco. But you know why I don't? besides being broke as fuck. Um, I just can't stand that city. You know, for, for, for because me... Because of the people. For me, it's not necessarily a people thing or political thing. Granted, I don't particularly want to step on human squeezins. Yeah, that's a big reason why I don't go. It's more the fact that I just don't do well in cities. Um, being a country boy, <coughs> it just... Cities just kind of suck my soul. It's it's not fun. <laughs> and it's it's hard to describe, but I grew up in the middle of a forest and I need that to some degree. 
it it helps center me. So you living in the city, even visiting the city is not. I went to. I don't like it personally. I went to San Francisco to go to the. Um, goodness, why am I drawing a blank on the damn name of the place? The museum where you. Uh, the. 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 Freaking. I don't know. I cannot think of it right now. I just went out my brain. But uh, it was me, my friend, and my stepdaughter and her daughter. Like the Discovery Museum? Thank you. That's what I want to say, but I, for some reason, I couldn't. it just didn't sound right in my head before I, you know, what I was trying to say. Anyways, so we're going down because you can go and see uh, seals and otters and crap, <clears throat> you know, because you're right there on the bay is where the Discovery Museum is. And so... We're going down, and all of a sudden I see seals, and I'm like, oh, hey, let's go this way. This is back when I was in my wheelchair. Turn for to go up the the ramp up to the edge of the dock, and as soon as I turn, I see this homeless guy whip out his dick, shove it in a bottle, and start pissing. So I grab both the girls and turn around. We're going to go this way type thing, and I just, I mean, he was in full plain view of everybody. Not trying to hide it or anything, just full on whipping it out to piss in a bottle. And that's the type of shit that really drives me nuts about that city is because it doesn't just happen yeah. every, randomly. It happens regularly. And that's part yeah. of the reason why I don't like it. The other part is there's a lot of San Francisco type people who really believe and act like their shit don't stink and that even qualifies yeah. to their political views, their social views, their just everything about it. And there's just too many of those people. As we mentioned, earlier, population density, it's like a bottomless pit in that town. So you guys know there's a bra what that transforms into a respiratory mask? Yes. <laughs> they, they, they push out all of, the, all of the, the art district, all of the, the, the cool Berkeley yeah. students can't afford to, to stay there anymore. You know, they're all outside of the city. Um, yeah. all, all of the, the, the hippies, you know, the, the old school hippies, like proper hippies. Um, you know, all the open-minded folks. Uh, I mean, they're everything that actually made that. I mean, back in the day, that's pretty much what it was. You know, yeah. it was a bunch of just like, hey, man, we're, we're, we're all just kind of having a good time here. And, 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 and everything's good. And all the hippies eventually got jobs and, and you know, had kids and, you know, yeah. still smoked a little pot and still kept their hair long and, you know, played cool music out on their porch and, you know, ran so head I, shops and stuff like that. It was cool. And, that, and the homeless people was like, like, ah, one in a couple hundred people. You, you might see a, a guy asking for change on the street, you know, not not the literally every corner that it was the last time I was there. So I, I got to say something. Ryan brings up an interesting point, and I really want to divert from politics, but this the, isn't politics. <clears throat> it's just San Francisco bashing. I, well, I'll divert from that to some degree. <laughs> okay. Um, because. As much as the old school hippies used to drive them nuts, drive me nuts, um, there was always a respect there because I'll respect anybody who lets me talk and they talk and there's an exchange of ideas. Yeah. Uh, we may walk away yeah. going, that dude's bloody nuts, but there was a respect in the conversation. That is the yeah. one thing in today's society. And I'm old enough to say them kids don't have that. Like I love... I love talking to people about things, things that are outside of my wheelhouse, things that I would have never known or I would have never heard, etc. It's something I enjoy. Nowadays, you would think that would be encouraged, but it's not because I'm asking questions that would make people uncomfortable. And it seems like if you make people uncomfortable, therefore, that's not a good question. Yeah, I think and, the and, pendulum's and gonna be swinging back. I think so know? too, and and it's not even about, <clears throat> and this isn't even about like the hot topics of the day. You know, women's rights, uh, uh, sexuality, transsexuals, blah blah blah. It's 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 about a whole spectrum of things that make people uncomfortable, and it's it's you know maybe it's the fact that that James and I and and Ryan to some degree are the last generation who didn't grow up with the internet. We were the, we were the last generation who, who you screwed up. Your father would, you know, your, whoop your, your mom, ass. Your, your father would whoop your ass or your mother would whoop your ass or your neighbor would kick your ass or all three. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there, and you know, there's a bunch of lists and stuff. If you listen to us through real flicks reviews and, and this show that you'd know what we're talking about, 
I think some of that held society together where you could ask questions. Nowadays, you can't. I, I, I think it's sad. I, I think we've lost something this step when. Well, and, and that's what I think why, why it's going to come back is, you know, the, the hippies back in the day were, were almost the, the, the counterculture to all the anger that was, that was felt, you know what I mean? The, the, the Nixon era and, and all of those mm. things kind of, kind of bred this, this bunch of people that was like, Hey man, it's all good. Just let's just chill. We'll fucking talk about it. It's all good, dude. We'll <coughs> play some fucking music. We'll smoke some hash. We'll figure this out, man. Yeah. And, and, you know, and I think a lot of the young kids today are going to start looking at a lot of the adults, you know, our age and, and, you know, maybe slightly younger, slightly older is going just like, hey, man, fucking relax, bro. <laughs> it's not that fucking serious, dude. Like, I, like, we can talk. We can have a difference of opinion. It's not the end of the world. And you know the one thing that really pisses me off? and this is something I truly don't get 100%, is getting angry on people's behalf is not something I completely yeah, understand. Man. You know, th- no, so I've got an example of things I've seen, and this is on social media, Twitter, Facebook, name your social media platform. This is what I've seen. Um, like, take a, a, a transsexual woman, and then somebody, you know, she'll somebody will say something not bad, maybe a little bit more crueler than you need to be, and and maybe not something you would say in person, then somebody, then all of a sudden you get this group of person, people that just absolutely annihilate that person. But then you see the, the, the person who this person attacked going, well, whatever, who cares? There's this yeah, weird... Or, or not even necessarily who cares, but hey man, listen, I might have handled that a different way. Yeah. You know, like This is what happens when you get angry on somebody's behalf is, is one, you're getting angry. And when you get pissed off and chastise somebody like a fucking 10 year old, they're going to back up and be like, Hey, first of all, fuck you. I'll do what I want. You know, they're going to dig their heels at versus the, that person who should have been the offended party. If they felt it necessary to walk up and say, Hey, listen, you know, that that's, that's hurtful in, in this amount of ways. And, and, and it'd be nice if we can all come to one understanding that we're all living in this world together. And this is my feelings and these are yours. You know, and maybe that person would have got their mind changed. Like, hey, you know what? I, I'm sorry. I was acting out of fucking ignorance, or, or, hey, I really didn't mean that. You know, I don't know where that came from. I'll try to be more careful for the future. Versus the the you know the the, the Karens of the world. That's Karen with a C. Um, you know, running up on your behalf, like, like, how dare you say this to this person? Don't you know that this is such and such? And so, <laughs> there is an example of this I want to give. <laughs> um. <coughs> Because this is something that I've noticed, and I wish I remembered this guy's name. So my humble apologies. It was there was that kid. This happened a number like last year sometime, and it was this young kid in a MAGA hat, and oh, it was yeah. with Native American guy. And you had people left and right. You had some big news anchors say, "Oh, this guy has a punchable face." You do this and do this. This kid base. This kid got a couple of million dollars, probably a hundred million dollars or more, from CNN for the stuff they said. And all these people were up in arms and defa- on behalf of somebody. Now, I'm, I'm okay to some degree of getting offended and saying, dude, what the fuck? That was uncool. But when it was proven to be false, there needs to be some redemption, some repentance of, hey, my anger is wrong. No, nothing happened. These people doubled down and kept saying stuff. And Kathy Griffin, and now she's going to get sued. This dude's getting settlements left and right. <laughs> um, because of this one instance, this cat may not have to work ever. I'm wondering, like, why doesn't this shit ever happen to me? All I get, <laughs> all I get called is fat, even yeah. though I was way, well, I weigh less then right? than I did now. Because you deserved it. But you, you know, if it happened to you, it's probably something you fucking caused. Hey, I mean, shut up. Let's be yeah. honest here. And, and hey, walk walk around in a maga hat. You know what I mean? Look, that that that's fucking crazy. By the way, no, thank one you. One of the most one of the most disgusting things in the world to me is, is, is how Americans treat other Americans yeah. simply because of a hat. Yeah. Like, look, man, your, your opinions about, about what that stands for, what it doesn't stand for, or, or how it represents that person aside, like the, the amount of stories I've heard of people at like airports, you know, um, getting their hats snatched off and punched in the face kind of things like, uh, there's there's a bunch of stories about people wearing like uh, um, um, satirical versions of the hat. Like uh, one of them I, I remember was make hentai great again. <laughs> 
and you know, it, it looks exactly the same with the red hat and just says make anti great again. And you know, there's a lot of make something great again hats yeah. that people That's have hilarious. come out with because, you know, it, it's one of those youth kinda like, Hey, everybody hates this thing, fuck people, this will this will be hilarious. Yeah. It'll, it'll piss everybody off. But when that incites violence, you know, <clears> towards <throat> other Americans because of a political opinion, like we really gotta fucking take a step back and, and start looking at ourselves in the mirror a little bit more. And, and hold on, I would say, by the way, people, it's not a fucking swastika. Exactly. Nobody has I mean, actually treat it like that. Nobody's actually fucking died. Trump hasn't round up people in detention camps. And no, by the way, the people on the border are not detention camps. They were illegally crossing into another country without permission. There is a complete difference than being thrown in a ghetto, than being lined up in fucking cattle cars. And as a guy who's who's Jewish, your comparison of the two it's is kind of fucking insulting. It's offensive. Um, yeah, but I think Ryan really hit the got on point with his uh, <clears throat> that it, there is really. No one coming along and saying, hey, let's just talk about this. Come on. It's not going to be the end of the world. And what it is is that there's people that can't stand being wrong in any sense of of politics anymore. Everybody is right no matter what. And there yeah, is and no middle human. ground. That's a weird way, by the way, that's a weird way to enter a conversation. I've never entered any conversation automatically thinking I was wrong. I was right. No matter the conversation, yeah. even if I'm even remotely an expert in a conversation, I've never actually gone into saying I'm right. This guy's wrong. It's a really weird yeah, position to enter. I, even if I <clears throat> don't think that this person has more information that I currently do, it's a very least be open to a different perspective. Yeah. You know, ex- exchange that information. You know what I mean? Like, I, I've always, well, not always been that way. I, 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 I was pretty, I was definitely a know-it-all for, for, for a while. And I still am to a certain degree. But at the same time, that's just kind of my attitude, like my actual opinion. Like, I love talking to people. I love hearing different perspectives because it, it could possibly change mine. And, and Let's be I don't honest, need you- to be right, but I would like to be. I would prefer to be right. So yeah. if somebody has information that I don't, please fucking give it to me. <laughs> so, so let's be honest. You were asshole adjacent, and that adjacent was James. Asshole adjacent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I still am, for sure. Um, well, the, what I would also bring up is that I haven't done it in a long time just because I get, I really get sick of repeating myself, for one. Well, this is a Two, word. I don't find any point in arguing with somebody who is set in their ways and doesn't want to move this from anything it. or because politics, mostly politics. And I remember one time politics. I don't enjoy talking about. Uh, there was a, this is back in uh, George W's first term. And I was talking to somebody and we were having a really good conversation. And then I said something that was, it wasn't definitive or anything like that, but I just said it. And I said, this is, how this is a point of view to look at this situation over. And they just looked at me and said, that's that's just propaganda. I don't, I don't want to listen to it. And I just remember at that point, I'm like, then there's really no point in me talking to this person. So I went about my business, but you know, that's, that's what really drives me nuts is that even if you say to somebody that is set in their ways in politics setting is here's another way to look at it. And if they aren't going to even open their mind to it, don't even waste your damn breath. See, this is why I I, I don't really enjoy talking politics unless it's super specific, like a California proposition, for example. Um, I just, I don't enjoy it. I I enjoy talking about like life differences, you know? So for example, you know, you know, uh, talking to like a black dude, a gay dude, uh, uh, a transsexual woman, et cetera. I, I enjoy those conversations because it's, not something that is currently in my reality. It's not something I've experienced. So it's it's something that I'm learning that I can take on and say, okay, and then I can gestate on that. I love that conversation. I don't like politics because politics brings out the ugliness in everybody. Yeah. And I don't remember it so much being this ugly when, no. when I was a kid. It, you know, it could have been to some degree, but the level of hostility in today's society is horrible i would say ryan brought it up earlier but 
I think the last time that politics was this violent towards each other would be back in Nixon. Yeah. That's the only time in history that I can really say, I mean, there, there's probably a few other political figures that had some dividing issues, but to the point where it is now where people are just really just going out and <clears throat> pissing people off just for the joy of it, rather than standing up for any ideals. Now, this is something I wish, and I hope, if we can remember and we can get the old guy on, is it because he was around during that era? Yeah. I would have loved to know his opinion. Because how close does it resemble it? You know, because you had parties, the Black Panther Party, you had other groups, and you had extremist groups that were in your face. But the media, the the stuff that I see, it always seemed one sided. Now the question, the question is, is it was the '60s really like today, where it was both parties? And and, and well, so because that's not something I actually know. That was never something I actually thought of. Well, so that's that's I, an I, interesting I gotta question. I got to backtrack a little bit because I did say ideals uh, without ideals. Um, back during Nixon, you had, you know, you had segregation being fought. So that was an ideal that I agree with to this day. Um, you had the Vietnam wait, 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 wait. war. You, you, you agree with fighting segregation? Yes. Okay. I just want yeah. to clarify that. Whatever. <laughs> if there is the audience single person out there, whoever the hell you are, shut up. Um, and then you had the Vietnam war, which is, a, which was another big one that, you know, Yes and no on that. I'm not going to go into my my thoughts on the Vietnam War. But, you know, so there was a lot of really strong ideals that weren't necessarily bad. But what we're seeing today is what I said earlier is where you just see people going out, knocking off a mega, a mega hat and then punching somebody in the face. There's no ideal there. That's just to piss the person off and get enjoyment out of it. So no, see, here's or, where here, or you feel like you're it, 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 it's wrapped up in identity politics. Mm, yeah, you know, like like ideals is one thing. I can argue ideals all, all day long, but like I don't attach my identity to to those particular. You know what I mean? Like it's not it's not hurting me. Like my whole discussion yeah. of politics is generally just the old school. Hey, I, I'd like to talk to people about how we as Americans prefer to be governed. You know, uh, not as as a, as a straight white male, I, I feel this and, and, and that and those things. But, you know, it, the MAGA hat people take so fucking personally. Yeah. You know, that it's like that hat is a personal attack on me and <clears throat> deserves to be punched in the face. I think I, I complete, I, I agree. I think the fact that it's, it becomes, no, perfect. It becomes their identity becomes, and it, yeah. they, they take it so personally versus, versus I'm conservative. And, and reality is there's only a few things that I really care about politically and none of it's really what I would wrap my identity around. No, I wouldn't. Um, but I, I do wonder if this is because of like the post Christian world, if this is something with, you know, if you grew up on the, in the, in the era where Christianity and, and like the sixties where people were trying to find God, if it was the fact that people then realized that politics was not your identity, your identity was something else. If you're a Christian, you, your identity is Christ. If you're a Muslim, it's, it's Allah. Um, I, I wonder if that's part of it is that it's the fact that there wasn't this universal understanding of, of what kind of your identity is. I, I don't, yeah, well, and I don't everybody know if I has that to one. share your particular, you know, you know, viewpoint and, and those things. Like it well, used to be about, you know, like with the with the Christians or, or having those sort of identity things. It's just like the live and let live. Like, hey, man, just let me do well, no, I, know, I, what I want, as, as opposed to everybody <clears throat> needs to sort of kowtow to to my to my thing. Well, no, I meant sense of others. I, I meant more in the fact that <clears throat> people. Growing up in that era, people had a sense of the fact that your identity wasn't politics; it was something else. You could it would be your sense yeah. of family. It could be the fact that you were a deadhead. It was something other than the the dregs of politics. You know, there were always yeah, there, there were gotcha. always there were always people who politics was everything. But when I was when I when I was younger, it was, dude, I'm a metalhead. Dude, I'm a uh, I'm this. I'm that. Now it's Dude, I'm conservative. Dude, I'm a Democrat. And then that's really it. I mean, there's no, it's a, it, they're about as, you know, it's, it's about as thin as three, two beer a, instead yeah. of. Yeah. The, the amount of times that I think about like, like me being a straight white male, one is only in conversations like this. 
it comes up like this, but I don't walk around going like like I'm straight and white and male. Like it, it is, it is not my identity. But that's your you white know? privilege. Like, like I get that's how other people would. If you know you're you had to recognize me from across the street, like oh yo, <clears> that's this this white dude over here. This heterosexual you know, like, Republican what? male over there. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> calling calling Ryan Republican <laughs> is. <clears throat> It's hilarious because that automatically made me incredibly conservative by introducing him in the party. Yeah, see, that's the thing is that, that I, I I share a lot of uh, uh, conservative ideas in a lot of areas um, and not in others, you know what I mean? Because my identity has never been attached to one of those things or yeah. another. I still it's, it's, to me all about best idea wins. Like, okay, perfect fucking example. I still me and my girlfriend the other day. Oh. Uh, um, are watching a documentary called uh, Hail Satan because it's uh. Hail Satan with a question mark so I had to say it like they wrote it um, it's a documentary by this uh, lady uh, uh, Penny Lane great fucking name by the way um, about the satanic temple okay now me being the non-religious out of I've three of this. us it's a good one. I, I have zero fucking interest I mean zero interest in aligning with something like the satanic temple, even out of, of like a, like a tongue in cheek kind of fucking, you know, middle finger to the, to the belief or something like that. Like, like I understand fight and I understand the satire and the, the, the sort of, uh, um, holding a mirror up to, 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 to certain things. I get it. You know, it's not lost on me, but, um, there are, there are, I'm so in line with their view of free speech. It's fucking not even funny. Yeah. I've seen you know, that documentary. Whole, it's good. It's fucking amazing. And it, and it really like as a, as a, uh, I stopped using the word atheist because I don't like fucking titling shit. Cause then that <clears> locks <throat> me into some kind of thing. Like that's an identity. Um, as a non-believer, a non-theist, you know, a, a non-theist, you guys, um, to me, atheist implies like anger or something, and there's there's so much fucking yeah. baggage attached to that. I've met a um, lot of angry atheists. That's why if I if you're not if you're oh if you're not God, religious, dude. non-theist is a much more, <laughs> I think, a better term. Yeah, and because because I don't like the description of what what I'm not. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> um, and that's all that is. In any case, <laughs> there, the the documentary basically follows. Um, the church. Them uh, kind of going around to, to people putting up uh, uh, like the Ten Commandments statues outside of like government buildings and things like that. And they're like, okay, that's fine. We want to put our statue of Baphomet there next to it, you know, because equal rights for equal religion, you know, those things. And, and, and that's kind of their, their thing. Even when I was a, a, a absolute practicing Christian, I was always sort of for the, the separation of church and state. I didn't feel like one had anything to do with the other. Um, I don't want religion in politics no more than I want politics dictating religion in any kind of way. Um, and, and, and nobody wants that. I mean, no rational person, you know, wants that because the, you know, what that could possibly lead to 50, hundred years down the road is, is draconian. Um, but it really challenged my idea. Cause I always thought that, that it was a real tongue in cheek, like a fuck you to religion, you know, this the satanic temple and not really a religion in and of itself. Um, but it, it really kind of challenged that idea, like like what they believe in. They you know believe in to a point, even though they don't believe in like a literal Satan, you know, or or the the supernatural. A lot of the um, the the rituals and things like that is almost the ritual giving up of religion or things like that. So blasphemy and things like that can be can be part of it. Um, which you know I, I've got I've got feelings about. Like a lot of my family members are. Are, are very, very religious. My mother is a very devout Christian. Um, you guys are two of my best friends. You guys are, are, are very religious and, and fucking heretic. We're not at odds over that. <laughs> I, exactly. I know. Never have been. Um, <clears throat> and so I wouldn't want, you know, like, like, uh, my mother to, to have to, you know, see those particular things. And so, you know, but I, but I get what they're doing and the, and the meaning behind it. Um, but it really does, to me, qualify as a, a religion. Yeah. Um, which is really fucking interesting to me. 
but yeah, there. I mean, there's still a bunch of you know weird fucking people, but but really, they're they're like few Crowley of, of free speech and oh, dude, that that dude's an absolute fucking whack job. <laughs> um, him and his werewolf fucking girlfriend. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, Google it. It's fucking hilarious. I know, I know about it. Yeah, it's freaking, that dude was interesting. Um, yeah, but, but yeah, no, I was. Um, you know, everyone's always told me like, oh, atheism can be can be a religion, and and <clears throat> I've almost come to realize that like it. I thought it was going to challenge like the Christian belief of things, you know, and do that. And it, to me, it really challenged the idea of of the atheistic religion. Yeah. You know what what people kind of <gasps> turn that into, um, and and how it actually absolutely can become this this ideology baggage attached to to this I, the idea of just not believing in the thing. I because I will say, and we're, we 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 got to wind things up. Is a lot of the atheists they, I would definitely say that atheism was a religion, except for the fact instead of believing in a deity, they end up believing on the the altar of like science or whatever their particular thing they they hold on to. Um, most atheists I've met are super religious. They just refuse to actually see it. Yeah, they're. <laughs> There, which is weird because as a guy who's a Christian, I can, I, I know myself well enough that I can see where my beliefs affect my worldview. Cause it is my worldview. I'm, I'm, I'm obvious to it. And a lot of these atheists are so, Oh no, I don't believe in God that they don't realize you really do believe in a God. You just believe in one that is kind of weird. Yeah. You know, well, and I'll tell you what I was, I was very careful about that also because I recognized that as, as a pitfall. I, I was talking to my uncle about it because he's, he's very, very non-religious. And, um, I didn't want to fall into this, this pitfall of just like all of a sudden, like you said, worshiping on the altar of, of science and just, you know, taking it as this infallible, you know, truth. So I got kind of lined up into the, um, the, the, we became aware of like the, the skeptical community and sort of what that is, is this, amalgamation of people all kind of bouncing these like, Hey, watch out for this thing. I'm, I'm an expert in this particular field. And this is a, this is an area where people are kind of bullshitting and, and all of them coming together, just kind of not your average person, like sitting in a basement saying the moon landing bullshit. I'm a skeptic. That's not a skeptic. That's just <laughs> um, a dipshit. But I, I, I wanted to have a worldview that was accurate and then let that dictate my belief, you know? Um, so I spent a lot of time really, trying to understand you know the the, the finer point not maybe not the finer points uh, but but the <clears throat> the actual ins and outs not just the broad strokes of something like evolutionary biology for the, example the minutia um, yeah the, the minutia everything that i possibly could understand there's shit that just still goes the fuck over my head <laughs> but i i wanted that to to start to dictate my worldview so i don't i don't try to do I try to be honest as much as possible, as much as I recognize it, to to not start just spouting bullshit about something that I'm not that familiar with, which I have a tendency to do. So, but I don't want to turn it into a religion or or, or be that thing. And I'm always open to the folks having more information than I do. It's just very rarely the case, unfortunately. Yeah, sadly. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say, you know. Uh... Uh, interesting thing is the John saying that, you know, there's a lot of people out there who do have religious leanings, but they don't even want to ever admit it, even though they really do. As I've pointed this out to people I work with is I said, you know, cooks, chefs, whatever the hell you want to call them back there are one of the most superstitious people you'll ever meet. Fucking, I mean, right up there with baseball players. And the reason why I say that, because I always get weird looks, is I say this. If you have a knife, or a brand new knife, and you say that day, I've never cut myself with this. <laughs> you are damn sure going to cut yourself with that. Maybe that day, or the next two days. Or if a knife gets sharpened, and you're like, that's really sharp. You're going to fucking cut yourself down. <laughs> Other thing is if you say to somebody like, oh, I haven't burned myself in so, so long. Guess what? Yeah. Another one that comes up is slicer. I've never cut myself in a slicer. Well, guess what, bud? You're going to find out what that's like pretty soon. And the other one that is a big one out there, not just saying knives, but also if you're there that day and you look over and you're like, oh, I've got enough of this. Well, fuck you too, Bister. Guess who's going to come in and order all that shit? 
And, you know, I've had everybody in the kitchen just look at me and go, you're right. We are all like that. <laughs> because, and yeah. the funny thing is it usually turns out to be exactly just like that every fucking time. So there's always something like that. Now, I am not a superstitious person, but when I'm back there in the kitchen, there are certain things I just don't say. <laughs> well, you know, look, superstition is is a uh, do nothing both, you know, for for yeah. those examples, a very useful tool, you know, yeah. because it, it keeps you from being complacent or or overly confident uh, in, in those moments. It, it it puts that in your mind of oh fuck, now I'm now I'm on the lookout for this because I was about to go in there with yeah. all the fucking you know, uh, confidence of the guy who's never cut himself with a fillet knife. And now I'm thinking, Oh fuck, I don't want to cut myself with a fillet knife. <laughs> yeah. But you know, that's the thing is like, there's always something that you believe in, whether it's a superstition, sure. where it's a deity, where it's whatever, you know, science, even that one, you can have it become your own deity. There are a lot of people that are like, Oh, well science is all, you know, and that just became your yeah, deity. Well, and, it, I would, and, it, and it becomes very arbitrary. It's like this this need to to believe nonsense is is just floating out there and looking for something to grab onto. So yeah. you know, if it's if it's not God, you know, people always have the sarcastic answers or like the flying spaghetti monster or you know those sorts of things. And so it becomes the sci fi answers where where the the facts become speculation. Like okay, yeah. here's what we know, and this is this is where it kind of can branch off. And this guy's got this idea, this hypothesis over here, and they're still trying to work them out into into cohesive theories. But people will gravitate towards one of those hypotheses, like the the, the multi universe theory, or you know that kind of stuff. And they're like, nope, totally true. We're living in a simulation, or we're in a multiverse. That you know, well, like, the, or we don't know. How about we don't fucking know, dude? And but I, that's the, so difficult. But the one thing I will say, and this is why I brought that up, and Ryan's right in his own, in what he just said, but I'm going to say it this way, is I have never in my entire life read, met anything with what I would ever refer to as a true atheist. It does not exist, to my knowledge. I have never met anybody who is a true atheist by definition. Because of all um, what we brought up. I think yeah, in, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the closest I think there has been in history is probably somebody, you know, a, a true one, probably somebody like Stalin, one of these these mass murderer guys who, because I, I think to be an atheist to some degree, I, I don't think, well, they could be wrong, I, I just think you there's a callousness there. Because once you do that, it's like, oh, people are cattle. Fuck yeah. it. You know, I, yeah. I think that's what but, happens. But even still, Ooh, like I, I would, I'll tell you what, that we'll 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 catch that for next week because I got I got some opinions on that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but yeah, yeah, we're running over. But yeah, I just well, that's what I was going to bring it back to is I have yeah, not maybe met next week. We'll discuss my my uh, my my atheistic uh, morality. Yeah, but I was just bringing that up as the fact that, you know, I mean, really, I've never met or or read anything by a a person that I would ever say is a true atheist. I've met people who come close. Would I, I mean, because all I'm doing is operating under the best possible uh, uh, assumption of what's going on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the, the only honest thing that I can do. Yeah. You know, so that definitely doesn't include. Uh, 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 a deity or or any organized religion that I've ever known, but again, I mean, I, obviously, I, I I'm aware of of where my knowledge stops, yeah. you know. And again, I'm op- I, I have to simply, in certain circumstances, operate under the best possible option with the amount of knowledge that I happen to have, you know. But recognizing, like, okay, this could be this could turn out to be wrong in five minutes. <coughs> I would, I, I would say. That the the only people I would probably consider a, a true atheist is the people who are unwilling to question their beliefs. And I know that's not the the dictionary yeah. answer, but the, the the one thing I'll say about being a Christian is nowhere in the Bible does it actually say not to question. Yeah. Um. So that, that's the one thing for me is that immediately when the, when 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 God, in my opinion, God Himself says, "Ask." Cool, because. Honestly, I'm full of fucking questions. So I, the, the immediately somebody says, oh, this is the way it is. That's it. It's like, okay. 
<laughs> then well, I'm well, going well, left, I mean, you go right. On, on what you're asking, I mean, if, if you're, see, because I, I started asking the, the, whether or not the fundamental existence of it was, was, was true. And with that is, is the doubt, which in the Bible very much says the, the way to heaven is, is a true belief in, in Jesus Christ, your Lord and personal, or not to say personal, but your Lord and Savior. You know, so the, the only prerequisite to, to eternal life is belief in this. Yeah. But the only way, as soon as you have doubt, if the lukewarm thing comes into play, and it's like you're out of the fucking game. But the only way, but the only way to get there is doubt, is by asking questions. But that's what I'm saying. But but having having those questions sometimes is the doubt itself. Doubting Thomas didn't go to hell. You said Danny Thomas. No doubting. He's one of the twelve. Doubting Thomas didn't go to hell. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. So, well, didn't he become a believer at the end of that? He was one? a believer before and after. So, basically, what he's basically what James is saying is is doubting is not a crime. Doubting's not an automatically well, no, no, barrier no, to entry. But are are the questions that you're asking already presupposing the existence of a God? Uh. I, I would say, you know, it, if it is, then it's then there's no doubt in your mind, and you're just you're just asking a theological question at that point. I, right, you know, my, my question point. started to be much more broad, in, in as much as like, okay, wait a second, is is this whole thing potentially not real? You okay, know? okay. Well, you know, Ryan, I'll, I'll just say this, and we can bring this up next week. I I'm impressed. That was a very well formed question and thought out process I'm not bad for a creepy guy no i i, I well, look, appreciated I mean, that that was really I, good when i when i switched to this man it, it was not <clears throat> out of out of anger i wasn't ill-treated by christians or anything like that i um i love youtube the fuck to death yeah. you know what i mean it, it, it was never anything about yeah. like like oh this is this is people are lying to me and all of that oh somebody must fucking really hurt you or you know no priest ever touched me it it was something that I was very, very much concerned with when I started to have these thoughts because we were talking about the, the like my everlasting soul. That was the fucking stakes of the game, as far as I was concerned. So it was very fucking important to me that, that I understood these things prior to to you know throwing a nail into that coffin. You yeah. know what I mean, and and also to that to that extent, I'm very much still open to every bit of every discussion that I'll have the rest of my life. Yeah. So you my know, because yeah, I, I would say because we we really really got yeah we it really up. ran over because um, I would I, I would say one of the benefits in in me I mean in in my belief and in what I think God is is God gave you free will He gave you choice and 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 with a choice and naturally comes doubt now doubt in my opinion is a very powerful tool because it requires you to actually answer the questions. Now that answer may lead you to a direction that you may not want to go, but that direction you may not want to go by itself is still an answer. It's, you don't want to go that direction, but you still believe that still brings hope. There's see, that's, that's one of the reasons why for me, I I love God because he's uh, Christ is because he says, figure it out. I'm here. And, yeah. I, and I, I like that. I like that in everything because the moment you tell me this is the way it is, there's no ifs, there's no buts, you can't look it up, is, is the moment for me it's like, well, I, you know, I, I'm a country boy. We're, 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 somewhat, we're somewhat rebellious if, if you force the issue. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, for the California pariah, for the fat man, and for... Whatever Ryan is, as always, thank you for listening. Goodbye.